Welcome to another episode of Bermanology on Letterman Row. I'm your host, Jeremy Birmingham. Today we're talking to St. Joseph's Regional High School's Luke Whipler from Montville, New Jersey. Luke is a four-star offensive lineman, ranked as the country's best center prospect in the class of 2020. He's also an Ohio State commitment. Since he committed to Urban Meyer last summer, Luke's laid pretty low and hasn't really opened up about his life, his recruitment, or anything like that. So today we're going to try to do that for Letterman Row fans and readers. Hopefully, you'll enjoy getting to know Luke as much as we have. Welcome, Luke, to Bermanology on Letterman Row. Thanks for being with us tonight. I know the sometimes the technical side of these things can get a little annoying, but um, you know, as as we try to let Letterman Row fans and followers and readers and Buckeye fans that uh, don't really know a lot about you, to be honest. I mean, you committed last June or July or I don't even know. Last, last June. Yeah. Last June, and since then you've sort of laid pretty low. I mean, I, I think that was part of your plan all along. So let, let me just cut to the chase. And Luke, how are you? How is Luke? I'm doing pretty good. I'm um, like, you're correct. That was kind of part of my plan. The whole recruiting process wasn't really for me. Um, I kind of like, like to lay low. So after I committed, I kind of, kind of shut everything down and um, I tried really focusing on my team and that helped. Um, and we won our state championship this year. Um, and had a 10 2 record. So that was my main focus was winning that state championship this season. Um, and nothing with recruiting and um, being committed already, I had that opportunity to focus. Um, and recently, um, for me, as I'm committed, I believe that um, once you're committed to something, I shouldn't be taking other visits or anything to that nature. So I've been trying to plan to get back out to Ohio State. Um, and I actually just got my shoulder repaired on my tore my labrum. So I got that done a few weeks ago. So I'm slowly recovering from that. Um, so, I mean, in the meantime, I'm, I've been pretty good. So, no camps? You're not doing, like, the, the rivals camps, the Nike combines, all that stuff? No. Um, number one, it doesn't matter. N- number, yeah. number two, you're already committed. Number three, you're re- rehabbing. Exactly, yeah. For me, um, I know who I am as a person. I know a lot of people go to these camps just to be ranked and get their stars and all that kind of other stuff. Um, and as me, I know who I am as a player, um, and I know what I'm capable of. I know how fast I am. I know how I can jump. Um, so for me, it doesn't really matter all these camps. Um, what matters is when you put the helmet on, you put the shoulder pads on, and you line up with someone in front of you. Absolutely, um, absolutely. And you mentioned, and I'm just gonna. I mean, I have a list of questions that I want to dive yeah. into, but the the order kind of is uh, up in the air, so it's up for you know change. But you mentioned about how, as a committed player, you don't want to be taking visits elsewhere. Now, this is obviously something Ohio State fans are a little bit panicked about right now because one of your other co-leaders in the class, Paris Johnson, has been taking a lot of visits and drawing a lot of flack on Twitter. I know that behind closed doors and in private conversations, the things that Paris and you and, and the guys you talk to are saying may be totally different. But how do you, taking the, the approach that you're taking, deal with and talk with Paris about his approach? Um, for me and Paris, actually, we were just talking two, three nights ago. Um, and, I mean, for him, like, that's one of my friends outside of recruiting. If he does decide to go to Ohio State or if he does decide to go to somewhere else, um, that's his choice. He's one of my good friends uh, regardless. And for him, he's earned these opportunities to go visit these other schools. He's the one that put in these work and put in the long hours in the weight room and on the field. And he deserves to go take these other opportunities. And for me, I still believe Ohio State is the best fit for him no matter what. Um, but Because you guys are talking to other players together, like Turner Corcoran, the offensive tackle yeah. from Kansas. Every time I talk with Turner, I say, who are you hearing from at Ohio State? And he doesn't mention coaches. He mentions <laughs> Luke and Paris. <laughs> you know, So it, I think that fans hear or see the Twitter accounts and they see the visits and the jerseys and the pictures – but I don't know that they always get a, a chance to understand what you guys are talking about privately. Do you, as a recruit who is friends with Paris, who obviously wants to line up with him in college, do you have worries? Like, are you sitting there going, oh, I'm concerned he may not be here? Not at all. For me, I know Paris um, personally, and um, I feel like that he knows also that Ohio State is the best fit for him um, at the end of the day. And... I'm glad he's exploring all these other options. So maybe he'll realize, oh, wow, I got to get out of Ohio State right now. So, right. And, and Paris, um, the decision to do this was based kind of on the sudden retirement from Urban Meyer in December, okay? Uh, Everyone knows that you committed to, to Urban Meyer. Everyone knows that 
you were closest with at the time, Greg Schiano, who's no longer at Ohio State. How did you handle that transition, and why did you decide I'm shutting it down? I'm gonna, I'm not gonna let all the outside noise get in. Um, for me, um, having Coach Meyer retire at the end of the season, and having Coach Schiano, um just retire or not retire, take another job with the Patriots. Um, I mean, for me, I my whole view on my whole recruiting process going in was I didn't want to commit to a coach at all. I want to commit to a university and a program I believed in. Um, and that's what I did at the end of the day. I committed to Ohio State for the culture it has and for the academics. Um, so for me, just kind of I'm hoping to be able to get out there really soon, hopefully in the next two, three weeks, um, to be able to get to um, – he was to hang out and get to know Coach Day better, um, Coach Stud, and get to just to see how the program's um, going under Coach Day and um, all that kind of good stuff. So for me, um, Coach Meyer, Coach Chiano leaving, yes, it was bad and it was horrible. Um, I would have loved to be able to play under Coach Meyer and have Coach Chiano in my corner there, but um, I didn't commit to them. I committed to the university as a whole. So um, at the end of the day, it's still the Ohio State. And, um yep. What is your relationship with Ryan Day like right now? I know that he came out and talked to you, and you've you know you've had an opportunity to to get to know him a little bit. But he wasn't recruiting you. He wasn't your position coach. He wasn't your area recruiter. But when when August happened and, and the uh, transition and Urban was suspended for the three games, you obviously dealt with Ryan Day then. What did you gain insight wise into Coach Day, and what have you picked up from him? Uh, as he's sort of taken on the mantle of, of the face of Ohio State football? Um, for me, uh, um, getting to know Coach Day in August when he took over the team for those three weeks, and now that he's the head coach permanently, um, and he came to visit me, um, I guess that was like probably November. Um, he's a great guy. I mean, he reminds me a lot of what Coach Meyer is, and he kind of a blend between Coach Yano and Coach Meyer, um, and just a younger version. Yeah. Um, but he's a Northeast guy, um, so he knows it very well. He actually coached my head coach when he was a GA at Boston College. So um, I've heard great things about him as a person, as a coach. And I um, kind of talked to him about X's and O's, about life, and how he's going to prepare me to achieve the things I want to achieve. Um, I couldn't be happier, and I have full trust in him that he's going to take what Urban Meyer has done with the university and the football program and continue that and only make it better. Uh, you Stuff. you committed to Ohio State, as you said, for the culture of the football program and the academics. But And I know people may know this peripherally, but you committed to Ohio State over Stanford, uh, Notre Dame. We're talking about some of the, the country's creme de la creme when it comes to the academic side of, of what you know college life is supposed to be. Were you shocked when you went to Ohio State the first time and realized how committed that program was to academics compared, yes. to, compared to what you had heard about the school growing up? Of course. I mean, growing up, you always hear about like Stanford, Yale, Harvard, especially from New Jersey. Those are always the big schools. Um, Notre Dame, of course, being a New Jersey guy. Um, those are always the big schools you hear about. And for me, like you always think of like Alabama, like all those Ohio State, all the kind of um, big football powerhouse schools that kind of like you play football and then you're a athlete student um, per se. Um, but when I got to the campus and I saw how dedicated at the time Coach Meyer was to having students excel in the classroom and on the field, that's what completely changed my view on how these schools approach academics and their student athletes. Um, so that's really was one of the biggest things for me and getting to meet one of the heads of um, the Fisher School business and getting to kind of walk around that um, campus and the um, school side of things, I couldn't have been more impressed. So that's what kind of really hit me was how dedicated the program was, the football program was, to having their players excel in the classroom and on the field. And I know you, you've said you want to get back to Ohio State. You're thinking about the weekend of the 29th and 30th or maybe the first weekend in April. What else is on the, you know, in the future for, for you? Is it just rehab, getting ready through summer? Are you going to play any other sports? Are you just trying to get healthy? And, and you know, do you have official visit planned at Ohio State? Are you looking to do that in the spring or, or, or the summer or fall? Or what's what's next? Um, For me, right now, I'm focused on rehabbing. Um, Right now, I'm kind of just um, trying to get out of, this, out of the sling I'm in and um, just kind of trying to get back to ordinary life. I can't really drive yet. 
um, I drive a stick, so I need two hands. So um, I've really been able to have my normal life per se back um, from what I was used to. So um, I'm kind of focused on rehab and getting myself right. Um, so I'm healthy when I arrive at Ohio State, and I'm healthy for this my upcoming senior season. So I can hopefully repeat as a state champion um, with my team. So for me, that's kind of my main focus is rehabbing. Um, and all the other pieces are going to fall into place when they need to. Um, right now, I'm just kind of focused on me and my team um, and how we're going to do this season and how I'm going to recover. Do you have any plans for enrollment, or is there any opportunity for you to do early enrollment, or are you definitely a, a, a summer of 2020 guy, or have you have you talked about that with Ohio State? Um, yeah, we're kind of um, figuring out where I'm going to fall, um, so it's kind of up in the air right now, but yeah, um, either, either one's a possibility. Uh, I'm not going to say one's right now higher on the scale than the other, but um, either one's a really good possibility. I have credits to do either or, so I'm in a good spot. What are you going to miss the most about New Jersey when you go to Ohio State? The pizza and the bagels. Pizza. I'm telling you, Columbus pizza is a is a problem. It, it, it's a real, real problem in Ohio that we don't I, have a really great pizza places. Um, I think I was Max Ray took me out for pizza when I went on my own official. I coached Yano looked down. I'm like, you took, you took a Jersey kid out that I – are you crazy? But, I mean, pizza wasn't horrible. I'm not going to lie. But, um, yeah, definitely the two biggest things right there, bagels and pizza. There's nothing like it. What's your favorite pizza place in Jersey? Um, Nelly's Place in Waldwick. Yeah. Um, they have, like, thin crust, kind of like bar pizza. Oh, nice. And I can take it down a pie of pineapple and ham. Um, you know, you're going to draw a lot, of, a lot of ire from people saying uh-huh. that pineapple doesn't belong on pizza. Yeah, listen, it belongs on pizza if you eat it. That's, that's all I'm going to say. I am so excited to go back to Rutgers this year for Stuff Your Face on campus in Piscataway. It's unbelievably good. I used to live 10 miles from um, New Brunswick, and yeah. my brother actually went to Rutgers. And every time we went to visit him, Stuff Your Face. I love that place, man. I yeah. love that place. I've, I've been there the last two two times that Ohio State's been there. I've you know traveled with the, on the road, and... Um, I've been able to go to stuff your face both times and it's sort of yeah. like it's it's funny when people are like oh w- which places do you like to travel to and i'm like well piscataway new jersey because of the yeah. of the stromboli so um listen man we really appreciate you coming on um thanks for for joining Bermanology on letterman row and i hope that your rehab goes well we'll see you in columbus in a few weeks perfect thank you very much thanks luke